The Pick Kit 5 has the 8-pin programming interface that I believe Microchip introduced with the Pick Kit 4 and ICD4. I've had my ICD4 for a few years now, but I've been reluctant to make a breakout cable for it. It was a little on the expensive side, so I've been a bit careful with it. But when the Pick Kit 5 came out, I decided I was going to get one and try some of the different processors. So I think this will be a good test of the Pick Kit 5. This is the latest of the Atmel design chips I have, the AT Tiny 13A. To give you some idea how long it's been since I touched one of the AVR chips, the code date on this is the 12th week of 2009. So likely the last time I messed with one of these was 10 years ago. It's been a while. About all I remember was I liked the interrupts on the small AVRs over the picks, but I liked the programming of the picks over the AVRs. I'm sure there are a lot more differences, I just can't remember them at this moment. So I'm going to hook it up with the programming cable I made. It requires six of the eight leads, something like this. These are the AVR ISP signals, plus the 13A does support the debug wire interface, which I don't remember using in the STK500. I think this is the oldest low voltage serial programming interface that Atmel used. Not positive about that though. I think there were some of the AT Tiny devices that had to use high voltage to program them. That or I had to use high voltage to fix the fuse bits I messed up. It's all a little fuzzy. Been too long ago. Well that's a good sign. No smoke and the light stayed on. And maybe a 10 milliamp draw on the 5 volt supply. Now to see if MP Lab X can see it. Okay, I'll start a new project. Selecting the AT Tiny 13A. And select the Pick Kit 5 as the tool. It's the only one I have plugged in at this time. I'm going to select the XC8 as the compiler. This is really to test if it can program this old of a microcontroller. I think we'd probably have to use the AVR assembler to do much useful with this tiny memory footprint but I wouldn't stand the chance of remembering anything about how to use the AVR assembly language. Give the project a name and let it do its thing. Let's see what the project settings are set to. First thing I always do is check the programmer's power to target setting. It is extremely rare that I power the target from the programmer. So it starts up in debug wire mode. Okay, let's see what it does. First thing I'll do is try and read the memories from the device. Okay, it can't communicate over the debug wire. The chip probably defaults to debug wire disabled. So yes, I want to use the ISP to enable the debug wire, I guess. Let's see what happens. I'll toggle the power to the chip like it asked. Okay, let me try reading the chip again. Oh, the debug wire can't read the configuration bits. That probably includes the chip ID information as well. I'll go back to the project properties and select the communication setting for the PIC Kit 5. So there is debug wire and ISP. I'll select the ISP. Kind of think that would be what it should default to. Think that is what the ATtiny 13A defaults to low voltage serial programming. I think there should be some kind of indicator in the dashboard of what communication mode it's in. Bit of an oversight there either on my part or theirs. Anyway, let me try reading the chip again, now that it hopefully is in ISP communication mode. Hmm, failed to connect. Not looking good. Should the bug wire be disabled and ISP enabled? Yes, I thought I just did that in the properties dialog. So I'll select yes and then try again to read the chip. Okay, that looked like it worked. Target device is correct. Got a revision ID. 
so it knows the correct device is there. I think that may be most of the battle. So now let me take a look at the configuration bits. Should be up in the memory views? Yes, there it is. Configuration bits require a read device memory step. I think that is what I just did. Well, I'll do it again. It's not that difficult. Just a few mouse clicks. A lot of notices around the configuration bits. Maybe for good reason. The PitKit 5 I don't think supports the high voltage programming for these chips. So if I were to set the reset disabled bit, that would be it. No more programming with the PitKit 5. I would have to crack out the STK 500 and spend a half an hour or so figuring out what jumpers go where to reset the configuration bits with the high voltage programming. Not going to go there. Let me take a look at the different memories, see if they are all blank. Okay, the program memory is at its default, blank state. The SRAM is all zeros. I think the SRAM really starts at 60 hex. The SFRs are all zero. I'm pretty sure that should not be the default value for all of them. So not sure about that. And the EEPROM looks to be all blank. Let me look at the configuration bits again. They're not red now, but I'm pretty sure they all look the same. Maybe that means they have been read from the chip. I looked over the XC8 compiler user's guide for AVR before I started this. That is not how it describes setting the configuration bits. Well, anyway, let me add a main.c file and see if I can get it to do anything. Don't want it to end, so loop forever. And compile. I'll fix that warning. Then just copy the configuration bit settings from what it generated. Compile it. No errors, so that seems to be okay. Haven't done anything and already over 10% of the program space used. Yeah, C is not really for these tiny chips. But at the same time, all the C startup is fitting in around 100 instructions. That's pretty good, I think. Here in the XC8 user's guide for AVR, it shows setting the configuration bits with the Pragma directive. Pragma config, then the setting value pair. And it says can find each chip setting in an AVR underscore chipinfo.html file that is located in the compiler docs directory. It's nice to know where the file is, but can get to the information from this question mark button in the dashboard. So I'll select the ATtiny 13A. And now this looks like how the user's guide said to set the configuration bits. The PIC configuration bits are set with the Pragma directive, so maybe they are migrating over to using that for the AVR chips as well. Let me try with the Pragma directive and see what it does. Okay, I guess it will support both. Think I'll have less chance of screwing something up using the Pragma, so I'll go with that. Now I'll see if it's really changing anything. I'll set the clock to a lower speed and see if it will read the new clock speed. Program it. Then read the memories back. And yes, it worked. I like the Pragma config way of setting the bits, but that's probably just because I'm used to doing it on the picks. 
have to have the chip do something. I'm going to put some LEDs on it. Want to try putting them on the programming data and clock lines? I'll start with 1K ohm. Won't be very bright, but with the green LEDs, maybe won't interfere with the chip's programming. Probably something like 3 milliamps to pull the line low. Should be okay. Circuit should be something like this. If it causes a problem, I'll just hook two LEDs to the pins that aren't connected to anything. I'll make port B, lines 0, 1, and 2 outputs, and then turn on all three LEDs. I think I'm running at about a 600 kHz instruction clock here. I'll try 30,000 as a loop count. Should be somewhere close to a couple hundred millisecond delay. Let's see what happens. Alright, that's working. Some visual feedback that the PitKit 5 is programming the thing. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. I do want to try and see if the debugger works. So I'm going to set the communication to debug wire. Then click on the debug project button. So I guess any time switching from ISP to debug wire have to power cycle the chip. Program running. Hit the pause button, and program is stopped. That seems good. Back to running. Let me see if I can set a breakpoint while it's running. Looks like it. Very nice. I'll try another and see. Yep, works good. That can really come in handy sometimes. So it seems like the debugger works, even on this old of a chip. So that I think is very good. There were a few odd things. Here I'm trying to change the clock frequency. And of course, switching from debug wire to ISP mode. I noticed that the configuration memory was not listed in the programmed areas. So I read the device. And sure enough, it didn't change the oscillator settings. So I try it again. And again, no configuration memory listed in the programmed areas. I did notice that after programming the device, the Configuration Bits tab showed the updated settings, but that is not the actual bit settings in the device. Because when I read the device again, and then check the configuration bits, they have not been changed. But again, the Programming tab shows that the configuration memory wasn't programmed, so I wouldn't expect the configuration bits to be changed. So on the Pick Get 5 page of the Properties dialog, the Memories to Program selection. The default is Allow Pick Get 5 to select memories. And the boxes are lightly checked for all three memory areas. So I change that setting to manually select memories to program. See if I can force it to program the configuration area. Now after it programs, all three memory areas are listed in the areas programmed. I'll have to uncheck the flash memory area, no need for it to program that, but it looks like that worked. So now when I read the device again, and go to the configurations bit tab, the configuration bits are set like they should be. I think that's a bug, but it's easy to get around, so not a big deal. Thing is, sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Not sure what I was doing different, but after manually setting the memory areas to program, it worked fine every time. So other than that, everything seems to work okay. Not exactly an extensive use of the 13A's features, but I wouldn't use this chip for anything new. It's just too old. 
but I think this bodes well for using MP Lab X and the PitKit 5 for developing for more recent AVR chips. I mean, I would expect microchip support for the 13A was way down on their priority list. This is going to be an 8 lead programming cable that I thought about making for the ICD4 a few different times, but I never did. Really out of fear of damaging the programmer. A loose wire touching the wrong thing might be the end of my ICD4. This is just a standard 0.1 inch spacing, 0.025 inch square post PC board header, which will plug into the PitKit 5. I did make sure I have 8 different color wires. Hopefully that will limit the number of times I hook it up wrong. I probably should make me some labels for it. For now I'm just going to put heat strength tubing on the leads. Probably will be all this cable will get. This is really just going to be for testing and the occasional odd processor layout. For the loose ends, these are some 0.5 mm square posts. I pulled them out of a right angle PC board header. They work great plugging into sorterless breadboards but I also have some single pin sockets that I use as test points that these plug into. I'll clean the flux off the wire and then put the heat shrink on. Get all eight done and it should work pretty good. The wires are eight inches long. I think that will be a good length for all the programming signals. I think it looks nice. Just always gotta remember, orange and red are the danger wires. Thank you for watching.